people. Welcome. So, I think that I should state that I am a Christian artist because God told me I was and also I like to make art. One of the most frequent questions I get from other Christian artists is, how do I incorporate Christ into my work? How do I get my work to be more spiritually inspired? And many others is kind of like this. So today I'm going to give you guys my process for how I create my work. It's not a one size fits all kind of thing. Everybody is different, but this is uh, kind of close to how I usually do things. It's not always going to be the same. There's going to be different factors that will help me determine what my art should be and how to talk about it and all that other kinds of stuff. So yeah, let's, let's go. Wahoo. Okay, so basically the way I usually go about this is I get my paper here and then I get some pencils. Oh no, look at all that. And then I just kind of start doodling stuff or whatever. And sometimes an idea will come to mind on what I can make. I basically get inspired by whatever the Holy Spirit makes me focus my attention on. And I can never really tell what will catch my attention. Like sometimes I'll be inspired by weather phenomenon, even though I'm not really into weather stuff all that much. Except for this one time where I discovered, or I didn't discover, I learned <laughs> about this type of cloud called an iridescent cloud, and it looks very fiery and rainbowy. And I thought that looked really cool, and I was like, golly gee, I really hope I get to see one someday. And I did, and I really think the Lord heard my wish, and he granted it to me. So that was pretty cool of him to do. And it inspired me to make a painting where I talked about that. And I gave God the glory. And see, sometimes it's just simple stuff like that that you can use to glorify the Lord and point people to Jesus and stuff and talk about how good he is. You don't need to make an entire sermon out of it. And it can even be stuff about like how I'm looking for or to the warm weather. It's supposed to be snowing tonight at the time of recording this. And I am not looking forward to that. And the snow sucks, okay? I don't care. If you like the snow so much, go back to Russia because there's a ton of it there. So to make me stop thinking about the snow and to take my mind off the icky, wet whiteness, I just made like a like a guy sitting at a cafe eating some food because eating outside reminds me of the warm weather and I quite like that. I I like eating outside. It's fun. Except for when the flies try to get into your food, but there's no flies in this picture. There will be times where I'll have an idea and I'll think I know exactly what the lesson behind it should be. Like one time I was told, okay, I wasn't told, but I was given the idea to make some jellyfish. And I was like, oh, this is easy. I know that jellyfish are iridescent, they're not iridescent on my feet. I mean, some of them are iridescent. They're bioluminescent, which means they produce their own light. And I was thinking, haha, this is easy. I'll just talk about how God has called us to be a light in a dark place. But something about it just seemed too easy like it's too convenient like I'm kind of missing something here what else is there besides just talking about the light that we're supposed to be as of this verse I learned about them the family tree the phylogenetics and stuff and it's always good to do research on the subject you're painting that way you can have more to talk about but anyway, I learned so much about jellyfish. I learned that they were part of a completely different phylum called Sundarians, which have which are separated from vertebrates because I don't know if I should 
be going into this right now, just, just watch the video. I go into more detail about it and I sound less dumb. I should also mention that you should write down the stuff you learned. That way you can articulate why you made this painting and what it means and how it connects with some kind of biblical thing, you know? Okay, but in all seriousness, the main most important thing that you should do when creating any piece of art for the Lord is to share it. And guys, I know it's tempting to just keep your art hidden away and to not show people how awful you are at drawing hands, but your art is not going to be helping anyone if you just keep quiet about it. You need to let it out there. You need to talk about how great the Lord is and stuff like that. You, you should do your best to demonstrate it because God doesn't choose people based on how talented they are. He chooses them based on their hearts. I mean, he does give them talents and skills and stuff to help them in their purpose, but that's not the reason why he chooses people. The point is that you talk about it. You talk about the meaning and what it stands for and why you decided to make it. I mean, you don't have to spell out everything. You just talk about your inspiration and how God has helped you and stuff. And there's a lot of ways you can share your art. You can do it on social media, forums, group chats. Now, I, I, it's hard, I know, to write about your art, but don't worry. In my next video that I do like this, I am going to show you how I write about my art and how I write my scripts, my social media posts, and stuff like that. It's not going to be like super in-depth, but I hope it'll just give you a basic idea of what I do and how I do it. That way, you can take some of the elements I show you and kind of mix it up and add your own spin to it, you know? To help you get the gospel out. And that's that's why I'm here. I want to help artists spread the good news. Alright, that's about all I have to say about that for now. I'm hoping to make another video like this in about two weeks. The next week I'm going to be making a time-lapse voiceover of me making a duck in a basket. So I hope you all stick around for that. And I just want to tell you all that God made you special and he loves you very much. Bye.